Hello everyone, my name is Syndrolix, and I am a sight baby. But this is a land guide! What a twist! So, you've decided to pick up Twin Sword Land. Whatever your reason for doing so, I can tell you right now that you've made a good choice. He's fast. Powerful. And easy to learn. Relatively speaking. You gotta work hard to make this guy a champion. And before you do that, you need a plan. That's what this video guide is for. It's broken up into sections, which I've laid out for you on this here table of contents. Click on a section to jump straight to it. We'll keep watching to start from the beginning. What makes Swordland special? I can tell you right now that you won't find the answer to this question from looking at his regular moves. His stuff is pretty standard fare. Normal attacks, smash attacks, and dodging all work as they do on most of the other characters. Swordland is special because he's built around three things. Speed, invincibility frames, and critical hits. These attributes put together let him avoid enemy attacks and deliver punishing counterattacks with ease. That's the basic idea behind this class. Now, let's see how you can capitalize on it. The first skill you'll want to raise as high as you can is Slip Dash. This is the name for Swordland's dodge skill, and ranking it up does two things. It reduces the stamina cost, and extends the invulnerability. At the highest ranks, a well-timed dodge lets you pass right through enemy attacks. Well, most of them anyway. A certain big dumb lizard comes to mind. Eventually, you'll get the Nimble Dash skill as well. This lets you do Slip Dash twice in a row. It's handy for spacing yourself from an enemy or passing through a multi-hit attack, but the extra stamina cost means you need to be careful not to spam this one too much. Stick with a single slip if you can, but use two if you have to. Double Crescent is a smash attack that you can use right after Slip Dash. You'll definitely want to master this one. It's the cornerstone of Swordland's non-crit offense. That and Pummel Storm. At rank 9 and up, you can do another normal after the smash. It's got a nice punch to it. Now it's time to learn the skill that single-handedly defines lands everywhere. Gliding Fury. What's Gliding Fury, you ask? That's Gliding Fury. Gliding Fury happens by pressing smash after you land a crit. It's lightning fast and hits like a truck, and it's the main source of your damage. Eventually, you'll learn Lightning Fury, which lets you do another Gliding Fury if the first one crits. Starting to see how important landing those crits is? If you're feeling crit-starved right now, don't worry. There are skills to deal with that. The first one we'll talk about is called Thousand Needles. Learn the skill? Then just use Slip Dash and spam normal attacks. Steppy, steppy, step, step, step. This will give you the Sharp buff, which increases your crit rate by 10. When you land a crit, Sharp changes to Furious, which also increases Gliding and Lightning Fury damage by 30%. The Furious buff will eventually go away, though, so you'll have to refresh it. But the more stacks of Sharp you score, up to 10, the longer Furious lasts. Oh yeah, Thousand Needles also has a smash attack. It's got amazing range and decent power, so you can use it to poke someone from a short distance away. Another crit-boosting skill of Swordlands is Risky Wind. This is a skill that gives you a buff when you slip dash through an enemy's attack. The buff is called Wind Rider, and it gives you 5 crit, increases your crit rate cap, and removes the stamina cost of... Hang on. What was that? 50! Son of a... Sorry about that, there was a small typo in my script. Windrider actually gives you 50 crit, which is insane, and you should take advantage of it all the time. But anyway, back to the bulleted list. Windrider also lets you use one smash attack without the stamina cost. The buff goes away when you do that, though, so make it count. Another nice tidbit about this skill is that, at rank A, you can get up to two stacks of it. The effects don't add together, but it'll buff up your next two smashes, instead of just one. Now, I should mention that Swordland also has some defensive skills that can lead into Gliding Fury. The most basic one is Standing Endurance. If you get hit but don't fall down, you kinda slide along like this, and quickly hit the smash key, you'll do a Gliding Fury. Standing Endurance basically makes it more likely that you won't fall down. It's great for regaining combat momentum if you mess up. If you do get knocked down, you still have an option in the Windmill skill. 
is left click to do a spinning kick in place, then do a slip dash and press smash for that sweet gliding fury. This one's a bit more advanced, since it's kind of a multi-step process, but if you can work every step around the enemy's attacks, you'll be back in the game. Or you could just rank Standing Endurance to 9 and press Dodge to use the getup roll. That works too. For SP skills, you'll want to focus on two in particular, Slashing High and Furious 7. Slashing High increases your attack speed and gets rid of all stamina costs for its duration, which is perfect for spamming Double Crescent and scoring all the crits in the world! Furious 7 is... Basically seven gliding furies in a row, except you're invincible during the whole thing and the first hit is a guaranteed flinch. It's more situational than Slashing High, but still very powerful if you use it right. Try stacking the Furious and Windrider buffs before using it for maximum damage! That's it for Swordland's most useful active skills. Let's take a look at the passive skills which complement his gameplay. Critical Hit. Increases crit damage and crit chance. That's a no-brainer. Smash Mastery. Increases the damage of all Smash skills. This includes Gliding and Lightning Fury and Furious 7, by the way. Another no-brainer. Lightning Fury Twin Swords. Increases the damage of Lightning Fury while you're using Twin Swords. What a concept! Critical Break. Increases the crit rate cap past 50%. It's a nice supplement to Risky Wind. Critical Damage. Increases... Oh... Well, it's right there in the name. Strength Mastery. Increases your Strength stat. The attack stat is based directly off of strength, so I'd say it's a worthwhile investment. Willpower Mastery. Increases your willpower stat. Crit is at least partially determined by willpower, so raising this one is sensible. Battle Respiration. Increases your stamina regeneration. I think I'm falling asleep. Stamina Mastery. Increases your maximum stamina. <sighs> I'm awake! Let's move on to something more interesting. Having a high skill level is all well and good, but you still need a little power to back it up. Picking the right weapons and armor is a very important step in character development, especially when you reach level 60 and the options you get are multiplied. Accessories are important too, but they don't carry all the nuances that make weapon and armor selection such an important process. With accessory slots, it's pretty much a straight line of upgrades, and you should get the best stuff that you can. Anyway, when you're building a set of gear, you'll want to focus on these stats, ordered by priority. Attack, Crit, Balance, Speed, Defense. I placed Defense in last because, while it does keep you alive if you get hit, proper use of Slip Dash lets you avoid getting hit more often than not. Now, for my gear recommendations. We'll start with some level 60 Twin Swords. Dreamwalker Twin Swords. These have high attack, speed, and balance for their level, but the most abysmal crit rate to ever grace what was once an endgame weapon. It's not as bad now since we've got all these amazing crit buffing skills, but you can probably do a little better than this. Raiders Twin Swords. Kind of the opposite of Dreamwalkers, actually. They have low attack and speed, and terrible balance, but they also have the highest crit rate out of every Twin Sword in the game. Yes, that includes the level 80 ones. There is a level 70 weapon that comes close, though. We'll get to that. Light Deathwind Twin Swords. These are the all-arounders of the level 60 bunch. The attack is a bit low, but they've got pretty good crit, balance, and speed to make up for it. You can compare these to Twin Sabers, which are basically the same, but they trade a little crit for a little speed. As for level 60 armor, there's really only one set that I can recommend, and it's a mixed set known as Black Hammer Swift. Basically, you're wearing the exquisite Black Hammer helmet, chestplate, and pants with Swift gloves and boots. This gives you a great amount of defense, and the strength boost is comparable to that of the Raiders set, which is designed for pure offense and no defense. The only downside to Black Hammer Swift is that it's ugly as sin, but maybe you like the gritty gray tough as nails look. I don't know, who am I to judge? I wear freaking Dark Crest! And damn do I look good. For level 70 gear, you'll want to keep in mind that there aren't any really terrible options here, just some that are better than others. This tier's weapons in particular are standardized around 7,000 attack, 40 crit, 75 balance, and 5 speed. They don't stray much from that mold. With that in mind, here are the standout Twin Swords that break the mold the most. Infinity Twin Swords. In addition to having a whopping 45 crit, the second best crit rate of all the Twin Swords, these bad boys have great balance to keep your damage as consistent as possible. Granted, they do have the lowest attack of the level 70 Twin Swords, but that's only a technicality. 
twin swords with the highest attack beat these by only about 200 points, which is marginal if you're feeling generous to marginality. Majesty Twin Swords These swords have the highest attack of the level 70 bunch when you factor in the strength bonus, which is abnormally large on this weapon. Combine that with the standard 40 crit and the above average speed, and you've got a solid choice for a weapon on your hands. Nighthawk Twin Swords Okay, I'll admit I'm reaching on this one. Nighthawks don't really have any outstanding attributes to them. The attack, crit, and speed are all average, and the balance is 77, which is above other weapons in its class, but still not a game changer. What makes Nighthawks stand out is that they're dirt cheap, so you can buy a bunch of them and shoot for high enhancement levels. As for armor, you can easily start in this tier by replacing your swift boots and gauntlets with apocryphal boots and gauntlets. This makes the Black Hammer Apoc mixed set, and honestly, it's on par with or better than most of the sets you can get at level 70. But if you want to specialize, you can definitely upgrade from Exquisite Black Hammer. Keep in mind though, that this will take a lot more money than sticking with Black Hammer Apoc. Full Apoc will give you the biggest boost to your base stats with about the same amount of defense as you have on Black Hammer Apoc. Champion Apoc trades some defense for a boost to your base stats and your stamina. It also mixes some light armor pieces into the set, and those can receive some great attack boosting enchants. Everlasting Apoc gives you the most defense. Normally I wouldn't recommend such a thing for Swordland, but if you're satisfied with where your offensive power is at, then it's okay to boost your defense like this. And finally, the level 80 stuff. You could easily say, pick one, they're all good, and you'd be half right, but this is the true endgame stuff we're looking at. The decisions you make here will last forever, or at least until the next content update. All of the Twin Swords have over 9,000 attack, not a joke by the way, and Light Armor has almost the same defense as Heavy and Plate Armor. In other words, you can't really discriminate based on these stats anymore. You have to cherry pick your gear to get the most crit, balance, and speed that you possibly can, since attack and defense are going to be at least somewhat of a given. But wait, I hear you say, armor doesn't give crit, balance, or speed. To which I reply, it does, if you enchant it. Which is pretty much the perfect excuse for me to talk about useful enchants for Swordland. I've been sitting on this itch for a while. A quick recap on enchanting. Each gear piece can take two enchants, one prefix and one suffix. Rank A scrolls and below don't break your gear on failure. Rank 9 and above, do. Now, twin sword prefixes. You've basically got Relentless and Twinkling, both rank 9 scrolls, as your best options. Relentless is usually preferred since it gives balance, speed, and crit, but Twinkling is good if you only need crit. For twin sword suffixes, you've got Maelstrom at rank 9, which gives huge attack and a little crit, as well as Valor and Bloodlust, two rank A scrolls that focus on speed and balance, with a little attack. If you have less than 18k attack, I'd recommend Maelstrom, but if you have more than that, Valor or Bloodlust will give you much bigger overall benefits. Heavy and Plate Armor kind of suffer in the enchanting department. The only good scrolls they get boost defense, and if you're playing Swordland properly, you don't need it that much! Tutelary's a rank 9 prefix, Sentinel's a rank 9 suffix, Resistant and Armadillo are rank 8 suffixes, and they all do the same freaking thing! So let's talk about Light Armor enchants. Those are way more interesting! For the prefix, you've got Well Balanced, a rank 9 enchant which gives you a little speed, balance, and crit. This may not sound like much on its own, but remember that you can potentially have up to 5 of these on you. The multitude adds up. For the suffix, you've got two options. The first one is Force, a rank 9 enchant which gives you some attack and balance in exchange for a tiny bit of defense. The second one is Enthusiastic, a rank 8 enchant which gives you even more attack and balance in exchange for a lot of defense. Again, you can have one of these for every light armor piece you're wearing, so if you want to stack Enthusiastic, make sure you can afford to lose that much defense. One enchant you should always have, though, is Master. This is a rank A suffix that goes on chest pieces. Light, heavy, doesn't matter, and it boosts your crit by 5. It does other stuff too, but the crit is the main reason this enchant is so good. If you need a little extra stamina, consider getting an Enduring enchant. This is a rank B prefix scroll for chest pieces that boosts your maximum stamina by 15 if you've got cloth armor proficiency ranked to A. I always found that requirement a bit weird, but eh, it's part of the game. You learn to live with it. As for accessory enchants, there's not much to talk about here. There are a few worth mentioning, though. Berserker is a rank 9 suffix for all accessories that regenerates 2 stamina per second, which sadly doesn't stack, but having one still comes in handy. Subdued is a rank 8 prefix for emerald and peridot belts that gives 2 crit, 1 speed, and 5 stamina. Crescent Moonlight is a rank 8 prefix for thunder rings and crescent moon announcements, which gives 100 attack and 2 balance. Passion is a special suffix for all accessories that gives 200 defense, which is handy if you need more. Beyond that, you're dealing with enchants that only synergize well with a properly min-maxed build. 
If you're running a build like that, then odds are you already know what those enchants do, and you're probably just watching this video out of academic curiosity. Hello, smart person! So, you've mastered your moves, you've got your gear, and now you're ready to show your stuff. Let's talk about Swordland's battle strategies. Normal enemies don't merit much discussion. A quick poke from your sprint smash followed by some gliding and lightning theories will make short work of any mooks you run across. Aside from that, Blade Tornado and Vanning Slash are quite good at dealing with crowds. If you're having trouble with these guys, remember that they're slow and stupid. Wait for them to whiff, then rush in and attack. Fighting against bosses, though, is a completely different story. At higher levels, these guys can turn fast and vicious, with attacks that are deadly if you make the wrong move. You have to know all of the boss's attacks and how to react to them to even stand a chance of winning. Lucky for you, Swordland's got one of the better dodges, if not the best in the game. Slip Dash can carry you through almost every attack a boss can throw at you. The few that it can't are easy to see coming, thanks to their unique wind-up animations. So practice, 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 and learn those tells. Your key offensive skills are going to be Thousand Needles for the crit buff, Double Crescent because it does decent damage and comes right after Slip Dash, and Pummel Storm for the damage and reach it provides. Naturally, if something crits, you'll want to use Gliding Fury straight away. Keep in mind, though, that you can be hit during Gliding Fury and Lightning Fury. You'll have to think fast to decide whether to glide or whether to hold. Aside from that, a key step to mastering Swordland, and any class really, is learning how to recognize combat momentum. In other words, you've got to adjust your strategy based on how well you're doing. Are you doing really good? Get brave and go for the big damage. Are you getting hit a lot? Back off and play defensively. Is the boss spamming his annoying and hard to counter attacks? Don't get impatient, just wait for the phase to pass. Now I believe in learning by example, so I made an extra video demonstrating all this stuff. In the video, I take my sword land to fight the raid boss, Glass Gablian. If you watch my actions carefully during the battle and think about all the things I just told you, hopefully you'll see why those strategies work. And at the same time, this may just silence the people who think I only talk a big game. <laughs> uh, wishful thinking. Anyway, here's the link to it. If you want to watch it after this video is done, the link's in the description too. that I main Scythe, Evie, but Swordland is on the fast track to becoming my second main. He's got the skills to pay the bills, especially with his recent update. I love his playstyle, and it's plain to see that he's got a high ceiling for skill potential. So here's a message to all you Swordlands out there. If you're getting frustrated because you feel like you're not good enough, remember that every battle is a learning experience. Take note of what went wrong in your battles that led to defeat. Buy some practice mode coupons and go wild with experimentation. And if all else fails, remember that you never have to go in alone. And for you Swordlands out there who mastered this game long ago, I salute you. Your dedication has made you the unsung paragons of our community. I know many of you don't see it because you're pursuing endgame content, but if you jump onto a lower level boat to help some newbies with a battle that's giving them a tough time, you will be showered with praise and adoration. Try it sometime, it might give you a fresh perspective. And finally, to everyone in the community, never forget what makes this game great. Because it's not just another Korean MMO grind fest. This is the online action game that predates and outclasses its competition. This is an unfiltered, action packed experience. This is Vindictus.